If you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Good morning. Our first hymn is 468 in the blue book, 468. William light the altar candles. As we always do, we remember that it is our responsibility to give thanks and respect to those who first occupied this land that we are on. And we begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is on Treaty 4 territory. The original lands of the Cree, Ojibwe, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and the homeland of the Métis people. We begin with the penitential rite found on page 45. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and don't forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In this time of Lent, we use the Trisagion three times. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. And we pray, Almighty God, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us faith to perceive his glory, that being strengthened by his grace, we may be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from the book of Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram. In a, a vision, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your reward. Shall be very great. But Abraham said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and, there, and the heir of my house is Elisar of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the, Lord of the, Lord, but the word of the Lord came to, Ab to him, This man shall be n not your heir, no one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look towards heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from your of the Chathalans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know what I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring him a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down, it, and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, to your descendants I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river of Ephrath's word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will pray Psalm 27, alternatively by the full verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. One thing I have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Lord, 
For in the day of trouble, he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Therefore, I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. You speak in my heart and say, seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. You have been my helper, cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is belly, and their glory is in their na- in their shame their minds are set on earthy things but our citizenship is in heaven and it is from there and we are expect- expecting a savior <clears throat> the lord jesus christ he will transform the body of our humiliation so that it may be confirmed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Our gradual hymn is Tree of Life, an awesome mystery. And this is verses 1, 2, Five and six C.
The Lord be with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of Christ. Speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I don't I usually give my sermons titles, but I did this one, and my question is, why a chicken? Why would Jesus use the image of a chicken? How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? and you were not willing. Someone who runs or cowers away from danger is often teased and called a chicken. But this image does not fit when it comes to mama hens with a brood of chicks. Now, I'm not really a fan of chickens. Uh, Nothing really against them, just not a fan. They flap and they peck you when you're trying to get eggs and the roosters chased you and Yeah, that's why I'm not a fan. But my mom, my mom is a fan. She loves chickens. My mom raised chickens. And there were always a few, a few favorites, who would follow her around and talk to her in their chirpy way, tipping their heads to look at her. But I think my favorite chicken story is one that has ducks. Now, mom had a few ducks, one of which was sitting on some eggs. And the mama duck died, and I don't remember why, but the duck eggs had already been set on for a while, and mom was looking for some way to save them, to have them hatch out. And she also had a broody hen, so mom just added the duck eggs, just slipped them under the the hen with her eggs. And that hen sat on those duck eggs, and sure enough, little ducklings hatched eventually. And the hen diligently watched over the three ducklings, treated them as her own chicks that had hatched alongside hers. And the ducklings grew larger than the chicks, and they still hung out with the flock of chickens. But there was one big difference. There was a water ditch along one side, one corner of the yard, and the little ducklings naturally gravitated to the water. Well, that poor hen She just was frantic, and she'd run alongside that ditch, just so upset while those ducklings were swimming, and she would run up and down, up and down the side, because chicken, she wouldn't go into the water after them. And she was the mama, and her instinct was to protect those babies, her babies. Well, she would try and try to gather them up and to keep them away from harm and away from the water. And my dad, my dad got a lot of amusement out of it, and he used to laugh at the antics of the hen. But it was a toss-up. Help the hen in her anxiety by bringing the ducklings out of the water or to leave them be because ducklings should swim. So my dad, of course, opted for letting nature take its course. Because mom had hens, I was able to observe when occasionally we would have natural-born chicks rather than the ones that arrived in a cardboard box at the local co-op. The natural-born ones had a mother, a hen whose whole reason for being was to take care of her brood. And the hens would do their best to keep and shelter their little ones from harm. 
not that the chicks would conform to her wishes. When rain began, the hen would herd them inside the hen house, but if they were unable to get to shelter, the chicks would gather under the wings of the hen as she squatted down, fluffed out her wings, and they had it underneath. And there they got shelter and safety from the rain. And if the hen sensed danger from a predator such as a fox, she would try her best to shelter them, sometimes to her own detriment. Chicks, you see, aren't always compliant. They don't always do what their mother wants, and so they suffer. They become easy prey, and sometimes they're even eaten by foxes. And so it is today that Jesus, as we heard, compared himself to a mother hen who will do whatever it takes to protect those baby chicks from the menacing fox, even to the point of giving up his life in hope that they will be spared. Like the hen who gathers her young under her outstretched wings. Because the hen is no match for the fox, not really. And yet that's the way of the gospel, isn't it? It's always the way of love and sacrifice over supremacy and domination. It is always courage over simple bravery. It is always the willingness to stand up in the face of injustice and violence that threatens to take away what matters. Because this is the way of the cross. Now perhaps it was just a handy image. Maybe it was then that as, as now, that the hen was a frequent victim of the menacing fox and so the parallel just simply worked. And maybe it was something more. Jesus is spending his lifetime among those who have been marginalized by all sorts of debilitating illness, among those whose lives have been marked by failure and grief and loss. He has not been about using his gifts for his own benefit, as we heard in last week's text, but also about giving them away for the sake of a hurting world. He's not smart like the fox in the ways of the world, but he is smart or wise in all the ways that matter. There are some who declare that chickens are actually a lot smarter than what we or I give them credit for. My first thought is that my mom's hen was smart if she couldn't recognize that the babies that she had mothered were actually ducklings. But maybe the hen didn't care. Maybe she was their mother in the ways that really mattered, regardless of what they looked like. So Jesus is the smart, self-sacrificing chicken as his model. And we humans are all those little chicks who seem bent on ignoring the efforts of the one who save us from all that threatens. And that is where the image finally comes home. We enter this story as that brood of chicks that are scattered, distracted, unable somehow to comprehend that if we would only be still, we will be nurtured by Jesus. Even when we comprehend our need to be still, to pray and to meditate, read scripture, we hesitate to spend time, that so precious commodity these days, our time. We hold back in spending that with God. As we gather in the season of Lent, knowing fully our need for repentance, and it would appear that our primary sin is what it has always been, our stand still in the presence of God, to simply submit to and receive and live in all the gifts God intends for us, to live under his sheltering, loving, secure presence. And so today, I pray, faithful God, you are the shelter of all who hope in you. May those who seek your faith be set free from fear and distress and come to see your faith. Amen.
Please rise. And let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand, sit, or kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. The response to the bidding, Lord, in you we trust, is you are a refuge and strength. We pray for all positions of authority that they do not misuse their powers for leaders of peoples and for all who make decisions about our future. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for the peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow and that your spirit of comfort will draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all our precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. Lord, we put our hope in you. You are our hope. Mighty God, you are a very present help in all our troubles. We put our trust in you. Guide your church that it may may lead others to behold your love and glory. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for our clergy and churches, for Linda, our primate, Mark, our national indigenous Anglican archbishop, Greg, our metropolitan, Helen, our bishop, Mike, our dean, Brian, our honorary assistant, for religious archdeacons in those dioceses, for their ministry and families, the Venerable Cheryl Toth, Archdeacon of St. Cuthbert, the Venerable Chris Dowelswell, Archdeacon of St. Chad, the Venerable Kim Sherwin, Archdeacon of St. Columbia, the Venerable Wilma Woods, Archdeacon of St. Aidan's Archdeaconry, for the Right Reverend Bruce Myers, Bishop, and the people and clergy of the Diocese of Quebec, for Bishop Jason Zinko, the people, and rostered ministries of Manitoba, Northwestern Ontario Synod, for Pastor Mike Hofer, and for the Congregation of Living Hope Church in Estevan, for the Anglican Church of Melanesia, for our Companion Diocese of Litchfield and Mayinga, for our economical partners in the Lutheran, Anglican, Ukrainian Catholic, Roman Catholic Covenant. Lord, we put our hope in you. You are our protector and our shield. Loving Father, we remember before you all who are refugees, all who have been driven out of their homes by violence or disaster. We pray for those who have had their homes repossessed, for those who have never known the shelter of a home. We ask you to guide and strengthen all who work with the homeless. Lord, we put our hope in you. You are our protector and our shield. We give thanks for all who have enriched our lives and improved our environment. We pray for those who work to meet our daily needs. We pray for all who work for relief organizations and for the emergency services, for all who give their lives in the care and service of others, for Captain Jackie and the staff at the Salvation Army Food Bank and Thrift Store. Lord, we put our hope in you. You are our protector and our shield. We give you thanks for all who have provided for us. We give thanks for our parents and loved ones. We ask your blessing upon our families and community, upon all who seek to strengthen the bonds of family life and love. 
We remember our St. Giles family, especially Clint and Sally Davies and their children, Tony, Jamie and Rick and their families, Jean and Kathy Davis and their daughters Lauren, Leslie and Nicole and their families. Lord, we put our hope in you. You are our protector and our shield. Lord, you are our strength in times of weakness. You are our hope in times of darkness. We pray for all who are struggling at this time, all who are finding life hard and the outlook bleak. We remember friends and loved ones who are ill, especially Gail, Gwen, Joey, Lyle, Robert, Terry, Robert Adams, Kathy and Dwight Beard, Gail Brandon, Jody Bryant, Mackenzie Delaney, Aaron Ducart, Frank Elberg, Wanda Fries, Dorothy Getz, Dave Genter, Bob Haynes, Glory Haynes, Alan Hodges, Craig Hollins, Debbie Hubick, Brian Joseph, Pastor Janet Kostnia, B. Lukey, David McDonald, Michaela McPherson, Friday McBooker, Leanne McCarthy, Dornian McGillis, Marge Miller, Arnold Newton, Dale and Walter Purvis, Julie Ritz, Les Saxon, Kim Smith, Candy Smythe, Wanda Stang, Derek Tropo, Lisa Vandeveld, Edna Walliser, Tom Wright, and Mavis Zinovich, and those we name silently before you now. Lord, we put our hope in you. You are my Lord and our shield. We rejoice in the hope that our earthly bodies may be changed and become like your glorious body. Change us, Lord, and we shall be changed. We pray for all our loved ones departed in this life, remembering today Janet Len, that they may now share in the glory that shall be revealed to us. Lord, we put our hope in you. You are our protector and our shield. Holy God, as you have called us, make us holy. Shield us from all that is evil and destructive. Protect us in the body and in the soul. Extend our vision of our purpose and journey that we may now know we are your people and citizens of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And our offertory hymn is A Spendthrift Lover, 177.
Let us pray. God of wisdom, may the light of the eternal word, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, guide us to your glory. We ask this in his name. Amen. Eucharistic prayer number one. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants, Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give you thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now... As our Savior Christ taught us to pray, we pray the top prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
breaking of the bread number seven. We break this bread. Christ's body once broke. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. And we sing, Lamb of God.
So, um, prayer after communion. Creator of heaven and earth, we thank you for these holy mysteries which bring us now a share in the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. A couple announcements. Um, last week, last Friday, was that only two days ago? Wow. Um, we had Lenten lunch here. We started out with a small crowd. Um, but we will grow as we go as this goes on. Next week we're at Trinity Lutheran at 12 o'clock on Friday for a Lenten lunch and followed by soup and bread. So everyone is welcome. And um, even if it's just somebody that needs a meal, they're welcome. Um, these Lenten lunches will go through Fridays in Lent until we get to Good Friday. When we get to Good Friday, we're capping it off with a walk of the cross. And for those of you who don't know what that is, you know that massive cross that's out there in the narthex? Well, we will be carrying that cross, taking turns um, from point to point and church to church. We begin at Trinity, we go down to the Salvation Army, we stop at City Hall, um, then we come to the Roman Catholic Church, um, St. John, St. Giles, and to the United Church. We will stop at each place. There will be a piece, a little piece of scripture, a hymn, and um, a prayer, and then we go to the next place. It's meditative, and um, it's something that I've experienced before as um, very, very much worthwhile to do in our faith, that we sometimes miss out on that part of carrying the cross. So. Then at 11.30, we will have a Good Friday service here in the church as usual. Something to know about the Walk of the Cross also, though, is that if you want to only walk part of it, or if you can't walk any of it, you are welcome to drive from place to place. And, uh, but just remember that somebody's got to carry that cross. And uh, so if you are able for part of it, that's wonderful. Okay, what else do we have here? Um, pause and pray continues. We are a small group, um, but um, I enjoy it uh, very much. But, and um, if it's your thing, please do join us. Eight o'clock, the link is on the, our webpage, uh, St. Giles' webpage. So do that. Okay, I think I'm just going to leave it there for the moment. Anything else from anybody? No? Thank you to everyone who made soup and bread and worked in the kitchen um, last Friday, by the way. Um, you know, you can't help but know that the numbers are, are smaller now, and that goes for volunteering as well. So um, those that do volunteer, we really thank you and totally appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Now, the blessing. Hockey game, playoffs, we need volunteers for, for that. And we have our regular ones, but good to give it a try every once in a while. The blessing, may the God of mercy transform you by his grace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. And our final hymn is 602, 602, lift high the cross. The number in the book, in the bulletin is not the right one, 602.
in peace to love and serve the Lord.